So we just got to the marina in Tacoma and we are getting ready to motor up to Port Townsend. We can't sail because we've got some mast damage. We're gonna pull the mast up there. Um, so that's gonna be about a eight hour motor. In this episode, we haul out at Port Townsend and do a ton of work. Motoring's no fun, but sometimes you gotta do it. Cruising by City of Seattle. So it ended up taking us ten and a half hours to get to the marina at uh, Boat Haven and wind was blowing 20 knots, gust to 35 and we entered the arena to a slip pretty much just inside the breakwater so we didn't have much time to check things out but we got a great uh, slip and we were next door to a beautiful wooden boat which we'll see here in a second um, yeah, it's a great marina. We really like it. And here's that beautiful wooden boat next door to us. There are just countless boats like this one here in Port Townsend. Wonderful place to be. And here we're getting the boat turned around so we can enter the uh, lift stern first. These guys are great. They really did a good job. And it's nice to see the boat's lines away from the dock. The yard boss and his crew really had to thread the needle with our boat here. You see the travel lift just clears the uh, covered tent to the right. I would thought you were taking that one. Look who's in our new home. We're down on the hard, so let's get a quick win by removing that through hole by the forward head. Even the largest easy out I could find wasn't quite large enough. You can see a piece of thin brass that's almost two um, circumferences to kind of make the hole smaller and uh, so I was able to tie this wrench off because I'm working by myself I tied it between the two posts uh, pulling the post towards the boat so it was perfectly safe and I managed to get the valve and the nut off so let's see if we get lucky here So here we are at the uh, mast removal point of our yard adventure and uh, you know we hauled out in June of 22 but we went up in February to check out the yard just to get our lay of the land and we talked to Chuck at the front office and we said we got a wooden mast we need some uh, work there and uh, who did he recommend? And without hesitation, he said Brian Toss Rigging. And uh, so that's where we went. So in the video, the tall, lanky guy with the dark beard, that's Ian. He is who we dealt with. He's an amazing uh, individual and took really good care of us. And what follows are the videos of their uh, expert removal of our wooden mast. And 
here the guys are getting ready to uh, unlatch the quick release mechanism that's underneath the staysail furler. There we go. Seeing the masthead for the first time ever, I'm trying to just videotape some <laughs> close-ups and uh, just to show where things are. VHF instrument. Both going there, that support side. I get more video to get the orientation of uh, hardware and uh, remember where how things go back on. It's pretty easy to forget after a while. So the mast is off. First uh, strip session is done. Got the shrouds off. A little bit of hardware. Tagging and tagging stuff. That's overall looks pretty good. Found some weird stuff. Gonna have to be corrected. But the big thing and the main reason is the IRAT. Not good, but it's very isolated. Otherwise, it looks pretty good on first look. We'll take a closer look tomorrow. It is time to take a break from mass work and go down to the dog-friendly great beer bar called Poor House and just relax a little bit, get a little doggy love. Thunderbirds in four times now. Looks like they haven't ever got it tonight. Marina entrance. Check out this drop. And she'd be like, yeah, sure. And this couple was anchored out just offshore and decided to row in and join me for a beer. So this is the Inner Force Day Tang. Where the mast is through bolted by both sets of spreaders and the mast head. Um, I found this black material. It's really sticky. It's probably as viscous as um, the day it was put on, but no one seems to be able to identify it. I can only get it off with brake planer. If you know what it is, make a comment. Taking apart the uh, upper spreader tang. So you've got a nut with sort of main brace work here. And the two tangs plates after that. And then the base plate that the fastener is already out of. Taking the, uh, what would this be, 
upper port tangs and the spreader mount off. I like to break all the screws free to get them past that adhesive barrier. And if the adhesive lets go, then I hit them with the power gun. Got two more to go down there. So looking at the base of the mast, we've got a metal boot that's held on with four fasteners. Spin up the track. We've got spreaders off except this last one. It's being a little bit of a bugger. But it is at 19 feet 8 inches from the absolute bottom of the mast. 25 foot mark for my tape on it. <laughs> and the upper spreaders are at 36 feet 8 inches. I did a little test sand just by hand and it looks like I'll be able to get down the wood without too much trouble, so I'm pretty excited about that. 50 foot mark. Uh, the physical mast top is 55 feet 2 inches. That would be right here. But the tallest thing I have is uh, the wind vane and that clearance would be 57 feet 4 inches, again from the bottom of the mast. So measure my exact freeboard, or as best I can, from the boot stripe. The boat does ride right on the boot stripe typically. And then I'll finally know how tall my boat is with accuracy. Imagine that. This is the arrangement for the spin for a There's no room for any free movement. That's just a failure waiting to happen. That's going to be redone. So, we got just about everything stripped off, just some minor stuff, other than spinnaker track and, of course, the mainsail track that it's sitting on. This stuff needs to stay on until the wood repair guy takes a look just so we can see how the hardware interplays with the wood. Here we go sanding the first layer of paint off the mast. Here in the boat yard, the boat is a complete and total wreck. But that's okay. We're working on a lot of stuff. And every night here in Port Townsend, the wind comes up. You can see the trees moving. Not too much right now, but uh, almost every night. Cools things down, which is nice to have a cool boat to sleep in. There we are. So thanks for watching. In the next episode, we'll do another through haul, tap all the chain plates, start doing the bottom, and start digging into the masthead just to see what the damage is. So